Uh, in today's lecture, we are going to talk about channel design. This is our lecture four, and this is beginning of chapter nine of your textbook. In this chapter, we will talk about introduction to channel design and the best hydraulic section. Today's lecture uh, fully uh, is about the introduction to channel design and the lecture in the next lecture i mean lecture five next week we will talk about best hydraulic section uh, the best hydraulic section would be our lecture five this is our lecture four and a good news for you is that as you might see in my youtube channel you know, from lecture five to the end of our course, I already completed some video lectures. Therefore, they, I will not give online lecture from next week. And I just upload one of these movies. We have up to, uh, you see, lecture 13. This is like last lecture of your hydraulic course. Every week I will add one of these movies to LMS. So you can watch those video lectures whenever you wish. But I will be available online during the class time. And in case of any question, you can send me a message from Microsoft team, then I can call you if I'm not in call with another student or another kind of uh, emergency words. I will call you and we can discuss about your question. So let's get started with the introduction to channel design. By the way, let's check my camera is off or not yeah it is off i'm teaching from home this is why i don't open the camera like you you never open your camera also but i'm so glad that during the midterm exam you have to open your camera and i will see you finally uh, introduction to channel design before going to the design criteria, you know, when we are talking about design something, design channel, design some electronic device, it means that to uh, make, to build a shape in a way that this is safe, secure, and also economic, you know, this is called design. But and useful actually useful for example in some cases design can be uh, for example what i'm going to say it design can be not good in terms of usefulness for example you design the building for two people but you design uh, you provided six bedrooms for two people which are going to live in that room it is not useful the design is wrong, even the stability is okay, it is safe, it is not cost effective, okay, it is, we call it is not economic. And the part of the economic is the part that we will talk in next lecture. In today's lecture introduction, we will talk about design criteria. What should be the maximum load, for example, the maximum velocity, minimum velocity, the shape, and how we can uh, deal with the stability in channels. Let's read this paragraph. Channel design may involve the stabilization or the alignment of an existing stream, or it may involve the creation of an entirely new channel. Okay, let's, uh, this first sentence talks about two issues. We when we say channel design, our aim could be either entirely design of a new channel, 
by starting by digging uh, so, uh, ground using the excavator and giving a shape and continuing up to end of the process. Or it could be for, or design, channel design could be for stabilization or realignment of an existing channel, like natural channels. For example, we have uh, Lara, uh, we have Boachai River here in Antalya, and we change its shape, its banks, and we do some construction works in order to realignment. Realignment means change the direction of flow, not fully change. It sometimes it's possible also. Sometimes we change the direction of flow from uh, one direction to another one in order to make some places more safe. But here, realignment, the author talks about the, uh, for example, construction cutoffs. You know, when we have some uh, meandering channels by cutoffs, we can make shorter the length of river we can make shorter let me show you what i mean maybe i talked about meanders maybe in the last week but la, pen you know assume that assume that this is my river and goes in that way okay realignment now no 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 Realign my aim from the construction of channel is to bring to take water from here to here. Yes, and I see that natural channel, natural river is too long. I can make it shorter. It could be beneficial to me to make it shorter. Therefore, instead of this line, I use this line with respect to, to some. Uh, criteria, especially slope of the channel. I realign the channel from the sinusoid or meandering form to a straight channel. So it is called escape, escape, escape. Yep. It is called realignment. And we also stabilization. Stabilization means to uh, control erosion process, silting process, and we I will talk about these uh, processes uh, says in detail in next slide. So there are wide variety of channel shape. Yes, we about the channel shapes. We talk that it can be regular, regular, or compound channels. Therefore, selection of a shape is a part of channel design. But which shape is more economic? It is the topic for next, next lecture. However, the solution needs to be cost effective as we told, as I told already. Main purpose of channel design is to transport water between two points in a safe and cost effective manner. So we it should be safe. What does the safe mean when we are talking about channel design? Any idea do you have? The safe building, you know, when you are designing a building, it's safe. It means that it should be safe again, for example, dead load, again, live load, again, earthquake. How about channels? What we, we, when we say it, the channel is safe, what do you, what I mean? Any idea? The safe canal is the canal that there is no overtopping. No, during the flood, natural rivers may water spill out of the channel. Okay, which as a result, we will uh, uh, the buildings and any other property out of the channel can be uh damage during the flood if there is spill out spill or over um uh, over flying water to outside the main channel it is not safe therefore cross section 
or capacity of canal should be designed in a way that um, water can be transported from one point to another point without overlapping, without uh, spilling out. This is why we have, uh, we commonly design compound channels. You see, this is a compound channel, one rectangular cross section and, the, and another, uh, we can say this is rec another rectangular or semi-trapsoidal cross section. For low flow, this small channel works, but for high flow during the floods, the bigger cross section works and uh, flood volume can transport in this way, in this cross part of the section, safely. Sorry, just a minute. I have to turn off my cell phone. So, uh, I talked about low flow condition and high flow condition. The safety is safety against overtopping and spilling out. This is uh, the uh, smaller part of cross section in this canal or this canal are designed for low flow, for carrying low flow amount. And the entire section are designed in order to safely transport high flow condition or flood flow. Okay, the other uh, issue about design of channels is the lining process. We, you remember that we divide channels based on different characters, for example, based on shape, we said irregular, regular and compound. The other way to classify canals or channels is based on the lining process. We have three kind of channels. When you are going to design, the first question is this, is we are going to design a lined or unlined channel? And also a grassed one, we, say, we can say grassed. Commonly grassed channels are not those that uh, are used in entirely design of new channel. Grassed canals or channels are used for stabilization process. When we are going to design, for example, our aim, we have a dam here, for example, and our agricultural area is here, and we are going to design it canal to bring to transport water from the reservoir to our land. We entire design an entire channel. And the question is that, okay, what, what will be the channel type? Is it lined or unlined? So lined means use of lined means a lined channel, a lined canal is provided with the lining of impervious material on its bed and banks to prevent the seepage of water or lining means use of a layer, impervious layer. Here you see, this is my concrete impervious layer that stops infiltration or seepage, or we can say stop the interaction between the groundwater and channel or stream flow through a impervious layer. Here, my impervious layer is concrete, therefore I can say it is lined channel. Here, you see this is an, a, a lined channel with grass, or we say grassed lined, grassed channel, or grassed covered channel. Or uh, it's sometimes it's sodded channel, you see sodded, grassed with, uh, or covered with uh, grass, plant, any kind of plant that can increase. What is the aim in when you are going to grass? The main aim is actually uh, to some extent control seepage process, but more mostly in order to increase the stability. As I told, grass channels for 
are used to increase stability. So by uh, grass channels, bed, this is bed, okay? This is here, it is bed, and this part is called bank. You say here bed and banks, I already talked to you. This is for a small, for example, if it is my channel, this is my bed, th these are banks. But for entire section, I can say this is bed, and these are banks or sides. This is the definition of lined, and it is clear that unlined canal is the one which has its bed and ba uh, banks made up of natural soil through which it is constructed and not provided with a lining or impervious matter. Yeah, it means natural, natural soil. No extra lining, no extra cover. Okay, let's show you some examples. This is a canal you see that uh, was built in order to transfer water from a point to another one. What is the kind of this or type of this canal? Is it lined or unlined or grassed? What do you guess? Unlined. Yeah, you are right. This is unlined canal because you see this is natural soil. We only uh, just digged this, the ground and we made a, a cross section. Maybe it is a rectangular cross section without any cover in order to avoid seepage. Why? Can you guess why we we don't like to have seepage? Do you know seepage? The meaning of seepage? No, sir. You don't know the seepage means water escapes from the soil. Seepage, something like infiltration. Leakage, maybe leakage, seepage. Yeah, In, I got it, sir. No. You, 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 if you have so, if you passed soil mechanic course, you uh, should be familiar with this term, seepage. It, it means that the motion of water from channel to the ground or something like infiltration in hydrology we talked about. Now you know the definition of seepage and my question is that why we uh, line channel in order to uh, eliminate seepage because seepage means a kind of loss of life, loss, sorry, loss of water, a kind of losses by through the seepage mechanism, partly this water goes to the ground, mm -hmm. goes to the infiltrates to the ground, and the amount of water that goes to the downstream decreases. And therefore, it is a kind of loss of water. So this is why we lined. As your friend told, this is an unlined canal because this is a natural uh, soil without any cover. So the other question I have is, do you think this ch canal is stable? No. Why? Because as you said, uh, there are seepage here and water uh, level going to decrease. Okay, Azad, this is uh, not full answer because stability is not uh, f fully relevant to the seepage process. Stable channels, when I talked about stable channel on the first, first slide, I talked about silting, erosion process, yes, erosion and sedimentation process. And this canal is not stable because there is erosion. Always, you see, by water, water washes the soil and change the cross-section shape. The cross-section shape is not constant by time. When the velocity is high or during the rainfall, the banks will be destroyed. You see, destroyed here or maybe destroyed this part and Definitely, after a year, you will see that there are lots of uh, 
erosion destroyed area and cross section may be changed. And when we have the we have erosion here, what will be happen? This canal not only transport water, but on, but also transports the soil with it. And this soil, when goes downside the soil, eroded soil, which is called sediment, it can damage our. Uh, Air, downside area, down, uh, downstream area. For example, if we transfer this water for another reservoir, after several years, we will see that our reservoir is full of sediment, full of soil washed from these banks and also bed. So this is not stable because of the erosion process. So I can give you half positive as a not full one score, half a score for you. So let's go to the next. Online channels are not stable because of silting and scouring process. The key answer is this, okay? Silting means uh, when we have a sediment, silting means settlement settlement of silt of sand and increasing changing the bed form change in the form of bed and scouring as i sold here is washing the soil from the banks and uh, uh, beds this is another figure that it is clearly this is a lined canal yes and they made a canal this cross section is trapezoidal and you see a layer of membrane. We have a, such a membrane to completely stop the seepage process from the canal to the land, you know, and then a, a layer of concrete is here. We have a shut create process that you are aware, you know, this is a concrete mixer and a, a layer of concrete is used in order to completely increase the stability of this lining. This is a lining process by concrete and by uh, concrete shot. And this is another canal with trapezoidal cross section. You see we have a trapezoidal cross section. Already this bank completely covered by uh, covered by concrete slabs and you here we see that they make concrete slabs and you see they try to make the concrete to in, to reduce the por porosity of concrete surface which finally reduce the manning roughness yes therefore by reducing mining roughness the velocity can increased and consequently higher amount of discharge can be transported in this canal. So I think that you are now completely aware that what is the lining process means and what is the aim of lining. The other type, as I told, it is grassed. Canals. Here you see a culvert, in, and therefore we have a natural stream. That uh, this stream, actually this valley, uh, transports water definitely during rainy seasons. And here we have grass canal that by the by the grass or plant cover the canal could be stable by the time and there is no siltation and the uh, scouring process. The figure again shows another typic, the, these are the, we say typic cross sections, a typical cross sections for grass canals or grass channel here, the slopes are 
Both banks have the slope of three to one. This is my banks. This is my bed. And you see here we have an uh, stabilization blanket. This is an st stabilization blanket, a mixture of uh, rocks. You know, a mixture of rocks within a uh, within a uh, wire work within a uh, wire work means within a cage that it is is a flexible like a flexible mattress made by stone. And sometimes we say it's gapion. I will show you gapion when we in the ne next slides. What it uh, what is the influence of gapion? It increases the stability of the bed. And then we have a bigger size of stone or rocks at the bed. There is no erosion at the bed. Therefore, when you are going to design a channel and you are going to consider grass channel, you can maybe use a composite cross section or biotechnical. It is called biotechnical channel design because you use both those biological, both biological methods like using grass and engineering works like mattress blanket, mattress blanket of stone blanket or gabion. Uh, therefore, in total, the work or the method you are using to stabilize this channel is called biotechnical work. And this is a typical cross section, seems to be safe. Now, uh, uh, we assume that you know that you are going to design an aligned or unlined or a grass channel. So, what are the other basic design factors after the selection of the type of channel? In this slide, we, I'm going to show you erosion and sedimentation process more in detail. And uh, I think let's continue from the definition and I will talk more about those figures after this definition. I'm talking about basic design factors. When we are talking about design something, the first thing in design of everything as a civil engineer is the load. What is the load? And therefore, we can design something against that load or design in a way that our structure is safe against that load. So our design, the main factors in channel design, the first one is the velocity. Velocity and we have two kinds of velocity, maximum velocity and minimum velocity. And the first one is called permissible velocity. The permissible velocity is the maximum permissible velocity and the minimum permissible velocity. It says that you, ha you have a maximum, you have a minimum. And the velocity of water that you are going to transfer from one point to another point should be within a given range not no less than not less than a minimum and or neither less than a minimum nor less um, bigger than a maximum why because because you look here if your velocity is higher than maximum velocity or maximum Permissible. Permissible means allowable. Allowable. It is if it is higher than permissible velocity, velocity of water. What will be happen? We will have erosion. Like this. You look. This is erosion process. Erosion by. And it means that the velocity of water that transported within this channel is higher than permissible velocity. So uh, there is erosion. Before going to the minimum velocity, I'm showing here, I show that how we engineered this channel in order to make it stabilized. 
You remember I talked about Gabion, Gabion structures, or Americans say sometimes Gabion. Gabion is a kind of, maybe in Turkey, they also say Gabion. This is Turkish, can be a Turkish word also, but Gabion commonly used. Uh, as I told, a war work, a basket of stone. These are basket of rocks and stones, very flexible material. You can put it in that shape. Then the water, moving water, cannot make erosion. And this is kind of bank stabilization. So why we should, while well, the velocity should be less than permiss maximum permissible, because to control erosion. On the other hand, the velocity could be also higher than min minimum velocity. Why? Here you see when the velocity is less than uh, the minimum velocity, we will have sedimentation and vegetative growth. Sedimentation, this figure shows sedimentation and also vegetative growth very clearly. As I told, in natural channels, we have sediment. Water, do you remember I told the water transport transfer or flow transfer sediment also because this is a natural channel and by natural channel uh, and by the time there is erosion from the banks or beds and water transfer sediment particles or small soil particles. And when the velocity decreases and the velocity is not high enough, the sediment will be what will be settled. It is called sedimentation. And you see that lots of sediment after this period, maybe after this period, you know, the velocity decreased and it went to be less than minimum velocity and sediment, we have sedimentation here and distortion at the cross-section shape. This, this maybe at the beginning, the shape was a regular rectangular, but now it is irregular cross-section. And, and we assume this is a kind of grass. Grasses or vegetations grow here and it is, it, you know, it increased, not only increased roughness, mining roughness, but also decrease the channel, channel capacity. The sedimentation also decreased. And in that case, when we have a flood, maybe because of the lower capacity, we will have overtop of flood here and some damages to the land. So here we have a general rule says that the minimum velocity is 0.6 to 0.9 meter per second. Good, very handy rule. When you are designing a channel without thinking about the it is lined or unlined, there is a minimum 0.6. Why? This minimum velocity is relevant to the sediment particles, not relevant to the type of channel. When the flow velocity is less than 0.6, any particle, small particles can be settled and we will have sedimentation. Is it clear? Any question? No question means to me is clear. Here you see I talked about vegetative growth. This is a canal within a city and we have lots of vegetative growth here. Please think about why we have such a vegetative, uh, such an unusual vegetative growth in this canal. And please think for 20 seconds second and then start to give your opinions to me.
don't think outside of my lecture, I answered this question in my previous, my earlier talks. Okay, any answer we have? Any opinion? Uh, I have an opinion, Hojam. Go ahead. I think this is most uh, because uh, this dam is not uh, flowing, I mean going. That's why there's some vegetables. You first said this is what? This is lo lost? Moss. I mean, moss? Yeah, moss. Sea moss. I guess. Yosu. Sea moss? Evet. Can you explain more? Uh, I mean, this is not flowing. Mm -hmm. That's why there is something. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. You didn't have environmental engineering course, maybe, or you should not. You don't have that course. I talked about this process. Uh, thank you for your answer. Uh, let's receive some other opinions from other students. Then I will answer it. Any other opinion? You know, this process is called eutrophication. I, I, here I'm, I'm not intended to talk about environmental process, but what I told you, I said you the velocity should be higher than minimum velocity. Here velocity is not zero. Okay, velocity is not zero, water moves, but the velocity is very, very low. Therefore, by uh, vegetation growth, vegetation growth appeared here. And actually in this canal, due to the, uh, to the release of some waste, sewages from the, the uh, or domestic sewages to the canal, the amount of nutrient increased and this nutrient um, does not moved or washed away because of the lower low velocity of the canal. So this happened and by the time, you know, this is a very uh, ugly perspective that we have in this city. Okay, so minimum velocity and maximum permissible velocity and minimum permissible velocity should be considered during the design of a channel. So this is clear, the minimum is 0.6. So you solved half of the problem. If you are going to design a channel, I will show you how you design it from the beginning to the end. And finally, you saw that velocity is 0.5. Is your design okay? Do you think your design is okay? No, because it is the velocity is less than 0.6, so you should change something. For example, you should a bit in increase slope, therefore velocity increases to be higher than min minimum. And about maximum, so we have minimum. So what is the maximum velocity, maximum velocity? So there is another table like here that shows you maximum permissible velocity. For example, if the boundaries, channel boundaries means bed and bank. Is made by sandy soil the maximum velocity is in that way. Interestingly, you see it is less than minimum. Why? Because sandy soil is unbelievably unstable. And you never, you cannot actually, in, in practice, you cannot make a, uh, you cannot allow for a natural channel with the banks of sandy soil <coughs> Definitely you will have erosion, definitely 
for any car, if the velocity is less than <clears throat> 0.3, you will have sedimentation. And more than this, you will have erosion. Therefore, sandy soil is difficult to, to be a stable condition. For other kind of the materials that we use to construct or to build our channels or to line our channels, the maximum velocity are given in this table. For example, if your canal, if your canal is uh, covered by gravel, the maximum velocity is 1.2. Or your canal lying with, con with concrete, the maximum velocity is 6 meter per second. And velocities more than 6 will be, uh, <clears throat> it will be uh, damageable. It, it, they can make damage on concrete or will be detrimental to concrete. And you see the most uh, resistant, the most uh, strongest lining is steel lining, which it is at the same time what uh, non-economic. We, we rarely use, maybe in some cases it is used, but we rarely use to line a canal with steel. This table was taken from hydraulics or or book of the Atal Blue, uh, published by Istanbul T uh, Technical University. I will share this uh, slide with you and you can use this table also. Okay, so the first factor was the uh, permissible velocity. We saw that uh, velocity should be given range higher than minimum and below the maximum permissible velocity. The other factor is called free board. This is, for example, uh, we construct, uh, we designed a, a trapezoidal cross section and we found that this should be the side slope and it is aligned. You see a kind of lining will, and the depth of flow should be something given here. In order to increase the safety for some unwanted events, for example, you know, we designed canal to transfer a given amount of water that we are going to release from a dam, but it could be a rain and therefore the water level can be increased during the rainfall. Or so many uh, events can uh, change water depths. For example, assume that by the time due to the, and this is another example, due to the sedimentation process, we will have a sandbar here and some, uh, some of the citizens can bring and put some debris, some, you know, construction weights into the channel and therefore channel cross-section will be changed by the time and therefore when you are designing you should consider freeboard. This It is called freeboard. Uh, it means the height may be between 50 centimeter to 75 centimeter and in some cases I know that there are up to one meter freeboard in order to avoid overtopping by due to time. If, if you had uh, some structural design courses like concrete structure or steel structure design, in that courses, we use something with the name of the safety factor. For example, our load, we design a building with the uh, uh, the use of, for example, re uh, uh, hospital, for example, and there is a standard load, dead load for hospitals. And uh, for, but before design, we multiplied 
that load into, for example, 1.2 or 1.3 or 1.1, in order to increase the uh, load, which is in that case we said, what is it? It is safety factor. The free board in channel design is something like safety factor in design of structures. Okay, as you see again, the uh, freeboard selection is a function of, or the height of freeboard is a function of discharge, and it could be in the range of half meter to 75 centimeter. Any question? Compound channel design to design a stable channel for, you know, uh, I told the answer of this question, but here I'm going to ask another question, but Azad, you, I would like to stop answering you and would like to receive answer from the other students. My aim, my aim is, for example, you see this is an unstable channel. Lots of erosion can be happen. As I told, the cross section growth of the vegetables, some waste and cross section. You see, look here. These are some construction waste uh, released to this canal, to this channel, sorry, channel and uh, capacity is uh, low here. And our aim is to engineer this canal. The design, to design a stable channel for this river, please suggest a cross section. You know, there are different kinds of cross sections. Which cross section do you think is good for this river? You should think about first lecture. We talked about regular cross sections, irregular cross sections, and comp compound cross sections. Trapezoidal, rectangular, circular. Which one do you think is good for this river? The aim is stabilization, and I told stabilization means to to per uh, to stop sedimentation and erosion process. How we stable it? By construction a new uh, cross section and by lining. For example, we are going to select concrete lining. But before lining process, we should select a shape, cross shape, shape and change the alignment or realign this uh, channel then line it what is the what is a, a suitable what is a suitable cross section for it in your mind okay it seems that Aza, do you have any idea now Hello, Azad, do you have any opinion? Can I say so? Sir, uh, sorry, sorry, I wasn't here. Uh, it can be rectangular. You mean that we can make a rectangular cross section? For example, please discuss more your idea. Why you select it and where we can make those rectangle? In the we can make uh, in the middle because the uh, here here you mean yes yeah, a rectangle section. Mm -hmm. But uh, can be uh, different uh, altitude. Different altitudes. Trapezoidal, it can be, I think. Okay, but who? You are saying a trapezoidal. Maybe this is the bed, then a trapezoid, a bank like from here and a bank like here. Yes. Yes. Sir. J 
let's let's uh, let let me draw those opinions a pen one of your friends azad said rectangle maybe this is the shape that azad means yes a rectangle cross section look 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 to see is a, i can follow this rectangle cross section for example, this is a rectangle. The other student. Not, not exactly like this, sir. Um, okay, let's let's continue. Okay. And one friend said trapezoidal cross section. It means that maybe this is my bed and this is the bank one, or this is the other bank. Yes, at different points. This is the, and then we can line it, for example, by concrete, it could be uh, stable. Okay, these are ideas. Any other idea? Before going to answer, let me give you more information about left bank and right bank. And to do this, I'm going to use if if you see that the flow direction is in that way. OK, this is my flow direction. When we are saying which bank is left bank or right bank, we always uh, look at the cross section in flow direction. So here, if it is flow, here is right bank. This is my right bank. And here is the left bank, okay, left bank. Because at flow direction, this is your right hand and this is your left hand. So let's see, actually, after design of this channel, which cross section the real engineers selected. The answer actually is compound channel because I think, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Because of this is the final solution a rectangle, as Azad said, a rectangle. This is the same uh, bridge, look. This bridge is that one, but the figure is taken from a bit far in order to show, show the cross section very well. OK, this is a rectangle cross section, but in compound form. Why compound as explained here? We have, as I also explained, we have two kind of flows, low flow condition like this and high flow condition. This is the same canal, you know. This is the same canal, okay? And for you here, you see the smaller rectangular section, but the bigger section for high flow. So, uh, when we have low flow, water moves here. But in high flow like this, water moves at entire section. And generally, in practice, it is economical to select what? Compound channels. Therefore, the answer is a compound rectangular channel like this for that problem. So I, I wanted to talk about more about this figure. Let's see it. It is common to use compound channel in practical engineering project to cope with different flows. So to cope with different flows here, different flows means low flow and high flow. Look, this is low flow. Another question, why, why in low flow, I have to use smaller cross section? One positive for the correct. And to increase velocity. Exactly, exactly. The first answer was from? Romesa. Romesa. Azad, you should be a bit faster. Romesa, wind. Romesa, positive one. 
to increase velocity. Okay, Romesa, continue. Why we have to increase velocity? Um, because uh, to avoid to avoid sedimentation. Hey, Allah, vegetation. Hey, Allah. To avoid sedimentation and vegetation yes. growth. To avoid vegetation growth and sedimentation. Good, good. So I think you now know that with two different flows, so the sedimentation and vegetation actually the written here, that's the sedimentation and vegetation of which could be controlled. Otherwise, you cannot control. Assume that without these walls, you see, you see here, I have walls. Even for example, uh, half meter or one meter wall. The other wall here, you see another wall here and another wall. This is actually uh, not uh, just with two uh, rectangle. It is three rectangle. One, two, and three. Yes, you understand me. Yes. Therefore, for the low flow, this channel works. If if water flows or uh, during um, during average floods, this cross section works. This cross section or this wall. But during the high flow, actually the construction is ongoing. When I took this figure, the construction is ongoing. And for the higher floods or incredible high floods, the secondary wall, water increases even here and this works. And the and this shows this is not that incredible because the second wall, this is the location of first wall, the location of second wall, and the location of the third wall. You see the third wall here, yes? These are called actually flood walls. We say flood wall. The only, the second wall was enough to carry this water, flood water, safely. Do you remember, I asked you, what do we mean when we say the const, the safe? This is the, this channel is safe. And this city is entirely in safe because there is also, this is a very big flood. Uh, even there is extra banks. These are called banks because now main channel is here extra banks we have to control higher level of water in the channel. So I think the meaning of low flow and high flow is clear now. So when we are going to design a channel, generally you see the walls here. Generally we should design in practice, we should design compound channels. Low flow to carry both low flow and high flow.